What is up, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what you're about to watch is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles, players of the week, position grades, and more. Now, before we hop into this video, why don't you go ahead and drop a like down below if you were impressed by Gardner Minshew last night, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week, and nobody will work me. Them to just straight facts. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop right in the video. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles preseason week number two position grades and players of the week. So, first of all, I am a bit sick, so I do apologize if my voice sounds a little stuffy because I'm sure it does. It sounds stuffy to me coming out of my voice, so I assume you listening at home can also hear the stuffiness, and I apologize for that. But the show must go on. We're going to start things off by talking about the offense and starting to talk about the quarterback position because this week was a great change of pace from last week. Gardner Minshew looked very confused in the preseason opener, looked like he didn't really know what he was doing, but this week he definitely stepped up and he made some big throws. Now, it seems like every time Gardner Minshew steps on the field, whether that be in a preseason game or every day at practice, it seems like he's gradually getting better and better and better with the more reps he gets, and you just love to see that. I was very impressed with Gardner Minshew's performance, and I think the only reason he was hindered a little bit was because of his offensive line play. His offensive line did not give Gardner any time to throw whatsoever. It was very, very embarrassing. And you heard the Leon Searcy throughout the whole entire you know, game. He was talking about how the right side was getting killed and the left side was getting killed. You know, all these backup offensive linemen were not doing Gardner Minshew any favors, but what was very impressive, too, is that he would stand in the pocket, like, while these guys are crashing in on him, you know, the whole defense coming in, swarming to Gardner Minshew, he still stayed in the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, and delivered a good ball. Uh, now I'm getting a little bit more comfortable every single week with Gardner Minshew as our second string quarterback. I do really want to see what he would do with a full starting lineup. And, you know, now that we know Nick Foles is going to be playing week number three, uh, he's not going to be getting that opportunity. I'm really surprised the Jags are playing Nick Foles. I would think, I would have thought that they would have played all their starters with the exception of Nick Foles because, you know, they definitely don't want Foles to go down. You know, even though Minshew did improve. You know, we're still not going to be going all in on Gardner Minshew to be the starting quarterback next season. But from how well he is learning the system, he's learning the plays, he's hanging in there, he's improving every week. It looks like this is the type of guy that if Nick Foles does work out and he's our guy for the next two to three years, then Gardner Minshew looks like a guy that can kind of study the playbook, sit behind a guy like Nick Foles, and actually maybe take over this offense and take over this team and be the starting quarterback. Now, there was another quarterback in this game that a lot of people were very impressed with, and he led the only touchdown drive for the Jaguars in this preseason, and I'm, of course, talking about Alex Magoo. Now, I understand why Jaguar fans like Alex Magoo. He's a mobile quarterback that gets out of the pocket and delivers balls on the run, and, you know, he had a good couple of throws that were out there and it looked like you know there was a couple of drops mainly the one where he was basically running around the whole entire field and it was like a Johnny Manziel throw step planted hucked it up uh I think it was CJ Ward I could be wrong tell me who the receiver was in the comment section down below but he ended up dropping it but it was a dot by Alex Magoo and a lot of people are very excited about this kid and think that he has an opportunity to pass up a guy like Gardner Minshew as a second string quarterback I still I don't see that I still think that uh, this is Gardner Minshew's job to lose, and it's definitely his as of right now. You know, as a pure thrower and, like, a guy that <clears throat> knows and has, like, a better grip on the offense, it seems like Gardner Minshew is that guy. And it seems like the Jags coaching staff also think very highly of Minshew because he played the whole first half and then well into the third quarter as well. So Gardner Minshew and these quarterbacks get a B-plus grade overall. I thought they had a very good outing and definitely a step up. And before now we dive into the offensive line, uh, I had to go look up some stats just to make sure, you know, I had my numbers correct for this video. I don't understand, like, I and in the game it seemed like Alex Magoo was having a good game. Like, don't get me wrong, like, it really did, but the guy went 2 for 9 for 10 yards, and for the amount of people that say, that have been saying in Facebook groups and on Twitter... <coughs> that Alex Magoo deserves this spot over Gardner Minshew. He went 2 for 9 for 10 yards, which was worse than Gardner did last week and worse than he did last week also. And Gardner went out there and went 19 for 29 for 202 yards. And you're here to tell me that Alex Magoo is beating out Gardner Minshew right now? I don't freaking think so. Gardner Minshew is still our backup quarterback. Alex Magoo going 2 for 9 for 10 yards, man. That's, that's ridiculous, the amount of 
praise that this guy's getting with those kind of stats. That's wild. Very, very wild. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the offensive line here. And let me tell you the biggest problem that I have. The reason I'm pissed off these guys did so bad is because the starting five offensive linemen featured AJ Can, Tyler Shatley, Ogabaye, um, and Will Richardson. And the right tackle too. Whoever that tackle was, that I think it was a left tackle. Whoever that left tackle was, I can't even remember. I think it was like Wester or something like that. Whoever that is, he better be getting cut tomorrow. He was terrible. Like, I've never seen worse offensive line play, and I survived the 2018 Jaguar season. Like, that, he was terrible, terrible. The reason I'm pissed off is because the rest of those four almost are guaranteed to see at least some action in 2019, and they sucked. They sucked. They sucked so bad. Not a single one of these guys really separated themselves and made me think, oh, he had a good game, or oh, he's a pretty bad dude. Like, he's going to be, you know, a really good guy to come in. No, none of them. None of them showed anything. And these are guys that are backups that are going to be playing in the game. And you expect Nick Foles to do something with this offensive line when they can't even block these second stringers, third stringers? Like, I'm having a hard time believing that any of our depth on the offensive line is good. And I'm having a hard time believing... Whoever gets to start at the right guard is going to actually be able to hold it down and be a good and reliable offensive lineman for us. I have, like, basically no faith in that. I think that AJ Can and Will Richardson are both options that are not great at that position, and they will struggle. You know, with AJ Can, at least he has the experience, you know, kind of know what you're getting out of him. But if you throw Will Richardson in there, that's a whole other ball game, especially against starters, when now again he's struggling against these backups. I'm going to be giving this offensive line another uh, F grade. I think they did terrible. They didn't give Magoo or Gardner Minshew any time to throw, and they did not open a single damn run lane to save their life. Like, there were running, our running backs went out there, and, you know, we're going to talk about them coming up next, but I really think that some of them showed flashes that they could be solid running backs, and they can't do it unless you guys actually hold your blocks. You know what I mean? Like, this offensive line did absolutely terrible, and I am pissed off about it. That's for sure. Now I realize the reason people are hyping Alex Magoo up. Because he had two rushes for 21 yards. Like I said in the beginning, I get it. He's a mobile quarterback. We're really not used to that type of shit in Jacksonville. I understand. He did well on the ground, getting uh, <clears throat> averaging 10.5 yards to carry along with that rushing touchdown, of course. Thomas Rawls. Thomas Rawls was a guy. I want to talk about him when we talk about the running backs. You know, the running backs as a whole did not do very good. They got a combined, let's see here, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 33. They had a combined 33 yards between one, two, three, four running backs. And they had a combined 33 yards. Thomas Rawls stood out the most, and he had seven rushes for 19 yards. But with his runs, he definitely looked like he was running downhill. He was a powerful runner, you know, signs of how he was in Seattle. I think that he's a guy that if we call on him in the regular season, I think he's going to be a good back to kind of come into the relief of like a Leonard Fournette. You know, similar sort of playing styles, not a lot of speed, you know, more of a downhill kind of make you miss in like open field kind of running back. But, you know, I'm very excited to see what Thomas Rawls has to offer. I'm going to be giving these running backs as a whole a D, though, because they did not do anything to impress me. I think Thomas Rawls has some potential, and I think Thomas Rawls looked good and looked solid in that game. But it's not enough to kind of boost this whole uh, running back room grade up, you know what I mean? So I'm going to be giving him a D. Now, another group I was very impressed with was the wide receivers. There were a couple of drops, but... C.J. Board and McBride are two guys that I think might have an opportunity to make the roster, and they showed why. C.J. Board had five catches for 54 yards, and McBride had four catches for 47 yards. Both of those guys, big plays. You know, they all they both had deep catches, uh, you know, on the sidelines, made big plays, stood out, and it looks like a guy like Keelan Cole is going to be off this roster because he didn't do anything. He had one catch for five yards. He had that good special teams play, though, don't get me wrong. I even tweeted out I, I was confused because I was... I thought he was just being stupid, and you know when he took it out of bounds, but he ended up making a smart play and made the good uh, special teams play for us. And, you know, they, he did do that, but as a wide receiver, he's proven to be more and more invaluable every single day. You know what I mean? When you got guys like C.J. Board and McBride, who I think are both better receivers as far as catching the ball go, 
uh, on your roster, you think that they are going to get a roster spot over a guy like Keelan Cole. So it's going to be very interesting with these wide receivers to see what the kind of the final roster looks like and how many wideouts they're actually going to end up taking. And if they're going to take a guy like Terrell Pryor, I mean, you hear that he did good in practice, but, you know, he's been hurt for a while. So maybe, you know, that lack of seeing him play, that might end up getting him off the roster. But McBride and C.J. Board are definitely two guys that can play the position and play it well. And these wide receivers as a whole are going to get a B plus. Though there were some drops, I was very impressed with the highs of these wide receiver groups, and I think it definitely hit the lows a lot. So these wide receivers get a B plus. And now time to talk about the offense's overall final grade. I think it's definitely a, um, an improvement for where it was last week with the skilled players, but of course the offensive line still continues to struggle. So I'm going to be giving this offense overall a C plus. I really wanted to give them a B, but I think a C plus is fair. I love seeing Gardner Minshew come into his own and develop into a pretty good backup quarterback. You know, I'd like to see the run game open up a little bit more, but again, that's kind of to the fault of the offensive line. And I love seeing these wide receivers ball and make it really hard for you know a guy to make the team. This is why you watch the preseason to see these guys fight tooth and nail to get onto an NFL roster and these are two guys that definitely want it in McBride and CJ Board and it's very very exciting to see where these guys are going to go from here. Next up we're going to be discussing the defensive side of the ball and I think that um, as a whole this defense played all right. They played pretty well. Uh, these linebackers are kind of struggling and I'm struggling to really see a linebacker that stands out because I feel like we have half a million of them and you know every single time that there's a play it looks like a different linebacker is out there making that play so it's hard for me to judge those guys you know but they are flying over the field and a lot of them definitely did make some plays and are up there in the tackle leaders for the Jaguars in this game so the linebackers as a whole are going to be getting a beat very solid very decent uh, it's going to be weird to see what linebackers kind of show out in the regular season to see who you know are constant starters are going to be but as of right now it's kind of a mixed mess and uh you know some of them played well some of them didn't so you know these linebackers definitely a position to keep your eye on the defensive line let's talk about that first play when Taven Bryan got blown 20 yards off the motherfucking ball that was ridiculous and Taven Bryan ended up coming out and doing all right you know Taven Bryan was the guy I told you guys I had to keep an eye on I did and he didn't really impress me he didn't really disappoint me either other than that first play so I guess if anything he did again disappoint me more than he made me happy but you know there's other guys Josh Allen man he's disruptive he looks like he's gonna be an actually like a really solid pickup and a really good player for us and I'm very excited for that for Josh Allen and then you got guys like Dewan Smoot and Eli Anku you know these guys that are coming off the bench that are really really making a difference and making sure that they can earn them spot earn their spot on the roster and it's going to be very very fun to watch and you got another guy on the interior named Dayton Jones I'm not 100% sure if I said that right I'm not even 100% sure what this guy's work but if last night was any indicator of the player he's going to be, he's definitely fitting in and molding well to the Saxonville mold in the Jaguar defense. And it's going to be very, very impressive to see what he can do because, again, he had a really good game. And it looks like a guy that's going to be making the final roster might be pushing a guy like Eli Anku out the picture. So it's going to be very interesting, very exciting to see where he goes with his career. And I'm going to be giving the defensive line a B as a whole. Very solid. You know, Taven Bryan definitely a low point in a good group of guys and you know we just gotta hope that Taven gets better because that's all we can hope for at this moment in time now the secondary these are this is a group of guys that kind of came under fire from fans this week they thought that they kind of regressed and didn't play as well I would disagree with that I think that I love watching these young guys play and that's why I'm really excited to see some of these guys play in the regular season if Jalen Ramsey or AJ Boye go down so I guess I'm not necessarily excited to see them play in the regular season but if that tragic injury happened I'd be very excited to see some of these guys kind of play in the regular season yeah did they get burned against a couple of second stringers or in the preseason yeah but you know I still think that there's room for growth there as it is with all of these guys that are playing in the preseason and I think to continue to grow is basically the goal for this Jaguars secondary group and if they continue to grow and they continue to get better and better week in and week out we are going to have a very very solid core of corners and a very solid core of young guys in the secondary that are going to be making an impact for the Jaguars. Now I'm going to be giving them a C plus on the day. I didn't think that they did great overall. They did not do as good as they did last week but this week I think they did uh, they showed that they're human, they made some mistakes, and I think that this is a good week that they could go back and learn from those mistakes. Now, as defense as a whole, I'm going to be giving them a solid B grade, nothing too terrible, nothing too bad from that defensive side of the ball. And without a doubt, I think that this is going to be a pretty solid group heading into 2019. As far as like the 
as far as like the depth goes, I don't think that the Jaguars can fuck it up that bad. I think they got good depth everywhere on the defensive side of the ball, especially linebackers because we have so many of them. And it's going to be very interesting to see how these guys play in 2019 if given the opportunity. Now it's time for the offensive and defensive players of the week. I'm going to start off with the defensive first because I think that it was a no contest. And again, I might be saying his name wrong, so don't be getting you know too fired up at me in the comments. But Dayton Jones, a defensive lineman, I think that he made uh, more plays than anybody. He stood out more than anybody on the defensive end of the ball. And I think he did enough uh, more. I think he did more than other people to make his case on why he should be making the final roster. So congratulations to you. You'll be winning your defensive player of the year award your second of the year and his first of the season so who's going to be the offensive player of the week now I had a bit of a debate in my head but I'm going to give it to my dog Gardner Minshew because I think that the progress he made and how much he drastically improved this week definitely deserves to definitely deserves to be noticed and not go underlooked Gardner again went 19 for 29 for 202 yards would have I liked him to see him throw a touchdown yeah but another good thing is he didn't turn the ball over and that is just progress from Gardner Minshew he hasn't turned the ball over yet all preseason but constantly constantly getting better and that's what you like to see out of your backup quarterback and that was my Jaguars versus Eagles preseason week number two recap, position grades, and players of the week. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them is just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.